What's going on everybody? Almost Counts Collectibles here and in this video we're going to be checking out wave number two of the Retro Morphin Power Rangers figures from Hasbro. Now we already did our review of wave number one so we're going to go ahead and open these figures and take an in-depth look at wave number two of the Retro Morphin line. So let's go ahead and get these open. All right before we actually open up our last figure here I just want to take a second to look at the overall packaging of wave two. So it is virtually identical except for the picture on the back and then of course the actual name of the ranger. Here we of course have Tommy and then up here in the corner we have Tommy's picture of his uh, Retro Morphing action or auto morphing action, whatever you want to call it. And then on the back here, we have the depiction of the new rangers that are included in wave two. So once again, Kimberly as her ranger slayer, white ranger, green ranger, and yellow ranger Trini. So that is pretty much the only differences with packaging. If you want to see the size comparison as opposed to the original auto morphin rangers and their cards, you can check out my uh, video review of the wave one figures. But we're going to go ahead and open up our last figure and take a look at all of them one by one. All right, everybody, now that we have all of our Rangers out of their packaging, we're going to go ahead and take a look at them one at a time and talk about the pros and cons, in my opinion, of each Ranger. Now, we're going to start with my favorite Ranger of wave number two, and it might surprise some of you, but that is actually Trini, the yellow retro morphing figure. Now, Trini, much like the uh, first four Rangers of the Core 5, have the same pros and cons that the first four did. She is no exception. I really like a lot of things about Trini um, and her figure. From the rubberized holster that actually has some movement and some give to it, which is much more realistic than the hard plastic mold. I really like the paint application throughout um, all over these Rangers. I think they did a really good job with the uh, paint apps and the design of the um, overall look as far as the paint and stuff goes. However, my main complaint with Trini, just like the first four Rangers, it's just the overall appearance. Um, they made these figures way too big and bulky looking, especially in the torso area. Uh, they're just way too large and inflated looking. And even when it comes to their hand molds, um, I think their hands are a little abnormally large looking. They kind of look like Hulk hands in my opinion. But there are a lot of positives to these figures like i said everything from the the paint application the holsters the fact that you actually get their uh, morpher and their respective power coin actually painted on there um, even around the boots um, and everything down in there we no longer get the white joints um, and things that kind of plagued the very first Automorphin Rangers that kind of made them stand out and not look right. They got rid of the dinosaur depiction on the chest. Uh, there are a lot of things to love about this figure. Now, unfortunately for me, as I said in the first video, what really kills it for me and kind of ruins them is just the overall large, bulky appearance of the Rangers. They aren't slim and slender enough to actually depict what they're trying to replicate here, and that just kind of bothers me, but that's my personal opinion. Now, we will take a look at Trini's weapons um, at the end. I'll actually combine her weapons with the other four core Rangers from Wave 1 and make the Power Blaster, but let's go ahead and talk about Trini's head sculpt before we move on. Now, Trini's head sculpt uh, isn't terrible. Um, it's definitely not the worst one in the four Rangers that we have received so far. What really bothers me the most about Trini's head sculpt is her hair. Um, they had plenty of room, um, especially on the actual uh, bracket here itself, to make this uh, you know look like she had longer hair back here. And I really wish they would have taken advantage of that because uh, her hair just looks way too short, uh, much shorter than it did in the show. And that's really overall what's robbing this head sculpt of looking uh, better is just the fact they got her hair wrong. Um, like I said, once again, her face is not perfect, but I really don't think it's that bad either. I just wish they would have fixed the hair and made it appear longer in the back. Um, but like I said, that's just my personal opinion. But Trini is my favorite Ranger out of the uh, Wave 2 release. So let's go ahead and move on to my next two rangers right here, which is the green and white ranger, Tommy Oliver. 
Now, both of these rangers come with their respective weapons. White ranger comes with Saba, green ranger comes with a dragon dagger, and both in the background there, as you can see, also come with a blaster, because for some reason, pretty much every known release of these two rangers always had to include a blaster, even though they never used them in the show. Now, there was one episode, um, technically speaking, that green ranger did have a blaster on him in place of his dagger, because uh, I believe it was the episode when Goldar, he had to hand over his um, dagger and the coins um, to Goldar. I believe that was the episode. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, he never even used it. It just appeared in his holster. So it always bugged me why they came with blasters, but that's a separate argument. Now, I was most excited about these two rangers. Uh, my two favorite rangers pretty much of all time um, were the green and white rangers and pretty much two of the most famous rangers in history. So it really bothered me with the amount of things that uh, they got wrong on these figures. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start with white ranger here. Now, let's talk about the holsters. Now, the holsters of both green and white are their correct color. We actually have a brown colored holster, and with Green Ranger, uh, his is black. And because they are more of a rubberized material, you can actually fit Saba and the Dragon Dagger down into the holsters. Now, is it a perfect fit? No, I think Saba fits a little bit better than the Dragon Dagger does. And you do kind of have to uh, push it uh, down in there with a little bit of force, but he does fit down in there, which I did appreciate that. If you wanted to customize this holster and actually cut a small portion of the bottom off, I think it would look a lot better. I might even um, end up doing that. But what really bugs me the most about this figure is the White Ranger's shield. As you can see, the shield basically just kind of sets down on here, and it's not even large enough under the arms to even look like it connects. You just have this large, odd-looking gap um, on both sides of the figure, and it just kind of sets on there, which is really a shame because I really like the material that they uh, made this shield out of. I'm going to pull it off real quick. I think it is very, um, very realistic looking. I like the coloring on it, uh, and just the overall material um, looks good. It looks like an actual real White Ranger, at least one of the closest ones uh, we've seen in a long time, um, shield, but they just, I just don't understand why they couldn't have added a little bit of extra length to at least make it look like uh, it was coming close together. Um, and, and that just, uh, that right there just really bothers me and really ruins this figure. Now I might even try to customize this a little bit or possibly use it on a different figure. Um, but as far as just the basic figure that you get with this shield, I would have almost preferred since they messed this up, even as good as it looks, to just have received like a hard um, case shield like the original ones that we could have uh, put on and off of the White Ranger. This just really robs the look of the Ranger. Now the rest of the paint applications and everything on White Ranger, uh, once again, is really good. Paint apps is something that uh, they did a really good job with on these figures, but just like the other ones, unfortunately, uh, Tommy's torso and the overall look is just way too big and bulky um, for what it should look like, and it really robs the overall look of the figure. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Tommy's head sculpt. Now, there is a different one for each. With White Ranger here, we get more of the traditional ponytail. Now, White Ranger's head sculpt, um, when I first saw it, uh, kind of bothered me a lot. And I was very disappointed with it, maybe just because I held it to a higher expectation. Uh, I, once again, I don't think um, his head sculpt is very good. I was more impressed with the Wave 1 head sculpts, although Billy was a little odd looking. But Tommy here as the White Ranger, there's just something off about this head sculpt that kind of bothers me. Um, it's not absolutely terrible. It's not like it looks nothing like Tommy Oliver. Um, it, there's just something about it. I can't quite pinpoint it. I don't know if it's the nose, the cheeks, I'm not quite sure, but uh, I, it's, they just didn't nail it in my opinion. It's not really, really good. Um, it's average at best in my opinion, but that is the head sculpt that we get with the White Ranger. Now, once again, I didn't directly mention it, but all of these figures uh, still model themselves after the Zeo automorphing action. And I went over that in the first uh, review of Wave 1. But basically, these function just like the original Zeo automorphing rangers, which in my opinion were the best um, 
it was the best execution of the auto morphing function and you just press down and you can continuously morph them you don't have to reset them like the originals you don't have to squeeze legs together or anything like the turbos uh, the only problem is just like um, with the wave one ones there's a lot of recoil so that head will bounce and like jerk back and forth as you're doing the auto morph but i still like the overall uh, design and function of the Zeo line and the way that they did that. But this is the White Ranger. And once again, there he is with the giant gaps under the arms. So that was very disappointing. Uh, one of the reasons why White Ranger is not my favorite figure in this line, and it ended up being Trini, uh, just because of the things they got wrong, um, especially with that shield. I thought that was very lazy of them. But let's go ahead and set that back there. We'll take a look at Saba at the end with the rest of the weapons. All right, now Green Ranger. Uh, probably my favorite ranger um, of all time. And once again, very disappointed with the shield. Now with Green Ranger's shield, as you can see here, once again, love the material. I think the overall look of the shield um, is very good. It's the size of the shield that really bothers me. The shield does not even come out past the shoulders. Um, you know, his shoulders are wider than the shield, which really kills the look of the shield. But if that wasn't bad enough, uh, you also have this giant neck gap um, where it has to fit over his helmet. And it just droops down way too far. You can even see the white diamond back there. Uh, you can kind of move it a little bit to hide that, but it does, you know, move around. And it just kills it for me. It really ruins the look of this Ranger because of the shield and how they messed up the size of it. Um, once again, I would have preferred a hard case one that, you know, snaps together as opposed to this. Now, I might try to use this on a different Green Ranger figure because I do like the overall look and material of it. But it's just on the large figure that it goes on. It just looks way too small. The neck gap is way too big. Uh, and they just they, they ruined that right there. Now, the paint applications on Green Ranger, much like the other ones, for the most part, uh, is very good. Um, I like how they didn't try to put the diamonds again on like they did the original Automorphin one, and they went for more of the spiked look uh, like he really has on his gloves and his boots. Now, the spikes that they chose to go with for design are just way too, um, they're way too thick. Uh, they should have been a little bit longer and skinnier spikes. Uh, I, I can live with that, though. Um, what I can't live with is the way that they did this shield. The, the only really error on the paint application, um, the diamond on the um, helmet is actually a gold color instead of the red, like the ruby red color that it should be. Uh, but other than that, like the bands and everything, even the, uh, the morpher, um, well, when it comes to the morpher, the coin looks good, but they gave him a silver morpher. Uh, it is not a gold-looking morpher. It is silver, and that is wrong. It should have been a gold color. So that is the Green Ranger. Uh, once again, correct color holster. You can actually fit the dagger down in there, although it doesn't fit perfectly, but it could be modified, I guess. Let's go ahead and take a look at the head sculpt. Maybe. Oh, well. <laughs> look at that. So it appears that my retro morphing Tommy figure may not be functioning properly. Yep, look at that. So it is not flipping all the way over. There's something wrong with the function down in there. Now it's not flipping at all. Okay, so that is the first uh, issue that I've really had with these as far as being broken or not working. Now, I literally just took this out of the package. It is brand new. That is the first time I have ever used it. And as you can see, I don't know if that's fixable or not. I don't know if there's a gear issue that I might be able to get down in there and look at. Uh, I will take it apart to try to look at it and bring you an update video. Uh, but as of right now, our Green Ranger does not work. So, yeah, that could be an issue, and that might be a common problem, unfortunately. I don't know. Let me know if you guys um, have an issue with that, but it is not auto-morphing. So let me go ahead and manually do it. Oh, I think it tried to do it that time. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I'll have to look into that and see what's going on with it. So here is the Green Ranger Tommy Oliver head sculpt. 
Um, once again, I think it just misses the mark. There is something off about this head sculpt and I can't pinpoint exactly what it is. Maybe if I look at it longer and compare it uh, to actual photos better, I'll be able to tell. But as of right now, I don't know exactly what it is. It's just bothering me. Something about this doesn't look right. Now his hair is different. It's not exactly in a ponytail, uh, ponytail you know, it's um, kind of flowing down the back. But once again, just like with Trini, his hair's not long enough and they had room to at least make it look like the hair was longer. So that is also hurting this head sculpt with the actual length of the hair. But that is Tommy Oliver right there. So, and there we go, some more grinding. Um, yeah, we'll have to see what that's all about. So once again, that's pretty much why White Ranger and Green Ranger were not my favorites and kind of disappointing. And now what's kind of concerning with this auto morphing um, function here to actually dive in and see what's going on with that. But once again, I will bring you guys an update if I figure anything out about that and let me know if you guys are experiencing the same thing so we can get the word out about that. Now, the last Ranger in the Wave 2 line is Ranger Slayer Kimberly. And this is my least favorite figure in the Wave 2 release. I thought that they did a terrible job executing this. Um, she does not even have any kind of cape or anything that she has. Um, the paint applications are a little off. Uh, just for comparison, uh, I will show you. So this is actually the Lightning Collection, um, you know, Ranger Slayer Pink Ranger. And you can, you know, pretty much tell by this, like this is a pretty good depiction of it. Uh, you know, it even has the actual white um, paint in between the white on the side. Uh, it actually comes down and forms like the pad right here and shows the black uh, at the very top of the leg. Uh, just, I thought this was a pretty good representation of the Ranger Slayer. And, you know, of course she also has uh, her cape here. And then we have the Retro Morphin one. And I just don't think it even comes close. I don't even like the pink coloring. It's almost more of a, uh, you know, it even kind of looks like it's got hints of red in it. Uh, I, I just, I don't know, just not impressed at all with this particular figure. I thought overall it was kind of sloppy, maybe even possibly rushed. And just not one of my uh, favorites by any means, my least favorite of the releases in this line thus far. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the thing that I absolutely hate the most about this figure. And that is Kimberly's head sculpt. Um, just, I mean, it looks terrible. I don't like it at all. Uh, I, uh, Yeah, I mean, I'll let you guys make up your mind. There's really not many more things I could say about this head sculpt. Um, other than what you're seeing right now, but I just think the head sculpt looks terrible. Uh, some of the, the paint application as far as what it should look like wasn't correct. Um, once again, a large, you know, torsoed figure, just all kinds of negative things about this uh, particular figure. And this is the reason why Ranger Slayer Kimberly is not anywhere near my uh, top favorites. Now her, okay, so her automorphin function seems to be working well, all of them thus far have been with the exception of green ranger so we'll have to look further into that but that is the pink um, ranger slayer kimberly now let's go ahead and take a look at all of their weapons now uh, the only uh, halfway positive thing about ranger slayer kimberly is the fact that the bow that she comes with um, i thought they did a pretty good job on that i liked the mold uh, so the bow is probably the best part <laughs> about her figure. Um, no real complaints about the bow itself. I thought it looked pretty good and with a little bit of extra paint could look even better. But that is the actual bow that comes with Ranger Slayer Kimberly. Now we'll take a look at Trini's power daggers. Now the overall mold um, of the power daggers I thought looks pretty good. They are a little too large in my opinion. Uh, I thought they should have been um, a little bit smaller. I'm going to go ahead and put them in her hands and we'll take a look at what they look like. So here they are in her actual hands. Once again, I thought they were just a little bit too big. Um, they're not like outrageously too large. I just think they could have scaled it down just a tiny bit. 
but the detail is there. Um, I do like the weapons and with a little bit of extra paint, uh, you can make these some actually, you know, pretty nice show accurate looking weapons. Now her daggers also go together just like Billy's power lance. Um, so they actually connect together <laughs> to form kind of their own lance. Now, I thought that was kind of weird, but then after doing it, I thought it was kind of cool. I mean, so I'll leave that up to you. Uh, they do, of course, you know, separate and do what they're supposed to do, but you can combine them if necessary. I don't think she ever combined her power daggers like this um, in the show. That is not coming to mind at all. I don't know if that was a thing in the Japanese show or why they added that function. Uh, but yeah, you can actually connect her power daggers. All right, let's take a look at Saba. Probably one of the best parts about um, White Ranger is his trusty sidekick and partner Saba. Now, as I mentioned, you kind of have to force this down into this holster. So I'm gonna have to give it a little extra force to get it out. So let's go ahead and look at Saba. Now, Saba, once again, just like all the other weapons, is highly detailed. Um, I think that Saba looks very good and with a little bit of paint uh, would actually look amazing just because of all of the uh, additional detail on Saba. But that is the Saba weapon that comes with the White Ranger. And once again, there is Saba's head. I mean, even his mouth sculpt and everything. I thought they did a really good job on these weapons. I will say that about all these figures. So that is Saba. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Dragon Dagger. Now, overall, uh, the dragon dagger does look good. I just thought the the butt right here of the um, the handle was just uh, too big. It kind of looks a little bit unnatural. I don't think it, um, you know, looks kind of true to what it looks like with having that big of a base uh, to the actual handle. But the overall detail of the dagger itself, um, I thought was very good, just like the other weapons. It's just this bottom part right here I thought was just way too large but you can even cut that off and I might actually cut the very bottom part of this off and modify this um, if the camera is even focusing in on that but that's that will be in the future here and I might show you guys my modifications so that is the dragon dagger now before we officially wrap this video up I do want to show you guys real quick the uh, complete power blaster with all of the core five um, Rangers weapons combined. So let's go ahead and add the only weapons that we were missing, which was Trini's power daggers to the actual power blaster. And as you will see, like I was saying with the, um, my only issue with the daggers is that they're just a little too big. Uh, they are as large as Billy's um, power lances. Um, if I actually pull these down to be side by side, uh, as you can see, they're the same size. So if they would have been um, even just a little bit smaller, so they weren't fully to scale with the power lances, uh, I think that would have made a big difference. But here is the actual power blaster. Let me get the, um, the bow back down in there and the sword. All right, and once again, um, when you combine these weapons, uh, they stay together really well and I'm gonna try to get this to keep focusing on there But like you can flick this around pretty hard and they don't come apart and I really like that They don't use the um, the peg system that the original weapons use so a much less chance of actually breaking the weapons But if you took the time to fully customize um, the these weapons and make them look show accurate these are some really good uh you know, scaled weapons with the exception of the, you know, size of Trini's daggers, of course, but just the detail on the weapons, the way they go together. Um, just, I, that is my favorite part about this line so far is just the weapons. I think they look great. And that was pretty much one of the biggest successes, um, so far is just the, the overall detail of the weapons and what you can do with those weapons. But I just wanted to show you guys that real quick uh, before we sign off. All right, everybody. Well, that has been wave two uh, of the Retro Morphin line. Uh, 
So far, the biggest disappointment, like I said, with just the mess ups of the White and Green Ranger and the inclusion of Ranger Slayer Kimberly, which in my opinion is just an utter disaster. But I am glad we got our Yellow Ranger and we rounded out the Automorphin team. Now, I don't know if they're going to continue this and possibly we'll see Zeo or maybe even Ninja Ranger Automorphins or whatever the case may be, but we will check out any future figures that come out and see what they're all about. So until then, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and I will see you next video.